Let's talk about Japanese sentence order a little bit more. The verb needs to be at the end of the sentence. That's something that is, is set. And the doer of the action normally comes towards the beginning of the sentence. However, the time expression can come before the doer of the action or after. So those two can be interchangeable. But in general terms, have your doer of the action at the beginning. That person who does the action or the item that does the action is followed by the marker wa. And as we've also learnt, you don't always need to say who the doer of the action is. If that's clear from the context of the sentence, we don't need to say it at all. But if we do need to say it, we bring it near the beginning of the sentence. Once you have established those two rules, the beginning of the sentence and the end of the sentence, then the other information within the sentence is fairly flexible. It can go in different orders. This is very different to English, where the order is actually very important to tell us who does and who is done to. In Japanese, we know what each part of the sentence does because it has a marker after it. So every noun, every item or person within a sentence in Japanese has a marker after it. We've had the marker o, which is the item that has something done to it, play tennis, eat sushi, drink beer and so on. We've had the marker ni, which comes after the place that you go to, or if you make a phone call to someone, it comes after the someone that you phone to. And we've also used the marker to, meaning with, which comes after the person you do something with. The doer of the action, if you say who the doer of the action is, is followed by wa, and this flags up to us who it is that's doing the action. An example to help you to understand this is she sees him. Kanojo wa kare o mimas. So she is the doer of the action, followed by wa. He is the item or the person that she sees, followed by o. He sees her. Kare wa kanojo o mimas. So he now is the doer, followed by wa, and she is the person he sees. Kanojo o. So how would you say she drinks juice? Kanojo wa juice o nomimas. Kanojo wa juice o nomimas. So she's the doer of the action, followed by wa, and the juice is the item that's being drunk, juice or. Um, he reads a comic book. Manga o yomimas. Manga o yomimas. So if we know who is doing the action, we don't need to say them. But if we don't know, then whoever's doing the action is followed by wa. And one other thing about Japanese sentence order that you're beginning to get used to is that the doer of the action is first if we need to say that person, then the item that has the action done to it, and then the verb at the end. We learnt the marker to to mean who you're doing something with. And so far, the people we've done things with, kare to, with him, kanojo to, with her. We'll add another person into the, into the group. The word for friend in Japanese is tomodachi, tomodachi. Maybe you've got a friend called Tom, Tom, who made an odd achievement, tomodachi. How do you say I go? Ikimas, ikimas. And how would you say I go with my friend? If we know that it's my friend and it's implied in the sentence, then you can simply say tomodachi. So I go with my friend. Tomodachi to ikimasu. Tomodachi to ikimasu. So the order, again, with my friend, my friend with, I go. I go to a hotel with my friend. Tomodachi? No, I'd have to put hotel first, wouldn't I? When you say I go to a hotel with my friend, as long as the verb is at the end, then the order of to hotel 
with my friend is flexible. It can be with my friend to hotel I go or to hotel with my friend I go, as long as the markers with each of those words are said after the word. So in English order, it would be friend with hotel to I go or alternatively hotel to friend with I go. So you don't need to worry about which of those items you're saying first as long as you've got the correct marker after them. So I go to a hotel with my friend. Hotel ni tomodachi o with tomodachi to ikimasu. Good. Hotel ni tomodachi to ikimasu. Sometimes. How did you say sometimes? Toki doki. So sometimes I go to a hotel with my friend. Again, the order can be flexible as long as you've got the verb at the end, but you might find it easier to think about the time expression coming towards the beginning of the sentence. So sometimes I go to a hotel with my friend. Toki doki. Tomodachi to. If you now want to flag up the fact that it's your friend doing the action, then instead of saying to, tomodachi to, with my friend, which mark are you now going to use if the friend is doing the action? Wa. Good, wa. So, my friend will go there. How would you say that? Tomodachi wa um, sore. And sore is that. Oh, soko. Good. So my friend goes to there. Tomodachi wa soko ni goes. Ikimasu. Tomodachi wa soko ni ikimasu. And of course, mass can be used for the future as well. So, my friend will go to a department store. Tomodachi wa departo ni ikimasu. So, when you say departo, the de is a normal length and it's the pa that's the longer sound. Departo. Tomodachi wa departo ni ikimasu. My friend will go to a department store tomorrow. Now, the time expression is one of the words that can come before the doer of the action or after. It's optional. Ashita tomodachi ni. No, tomodachi wa. Good. He's doing the action. Departo ni ikimasu. Ashita tomodachi wa departo ni ikimasu. My friend is tired. So she's not going there. Tomodachi wa nemui desu kara soko ni ikimasen. Tomodachi wa nemui desu kara soko ni ikimasen. My friend is tired, so tomorrow she's not going there. Tomodachi wa nemui desu kara Ashita soko ni ikimasen. Tomodachi wa nemui desu kara ashita soko ni ikimasen. We've talked a little bit about Japanese being a polite language. It, it has different layers of politeness. There's a respectful politeness that you use for other people, people outside of your own family. And then there's a humble politeness that you use about yourself and your own family when you talk about them. And this relates into some of the words that we're going to use. So the word for parents is ryōshin. Think about a boy called Leo, Ryo, Leo, who inherits his long shins from his parents, ryōshin. So Leo's shins, ryōshin. Ryōshin. When you talk about your own parents, you use this word, ryōshin. But if you want to talk about someone else's parents, 
you make the word more respectful by adding a short word in front of it. And that short word is go. So go ryoshin is someone else's parents. Or if you're talking directly to someone and you wanted to ask them about their parents, you might say, how are your parents? Your parents would be go ryoshin. So your parents... Goryoshin. Goryoshin. So when you talk about your own parents, you don't use the go because you're being humble. When you talk about other people's parents, you use go to show respect. So, my parents will go there. How would you say my parents will go there? Ryoshin. Sokoni. The parents are the doer of the action, so oh, they need a marker. Yeah. Ryoshin wa. Sokoni ikimas. Ryoshin wa sokoni ikimas. My parents will go there tomorrow. Ashita ryoshin wa sokoni ikimas. Ashita ryoshin wa sokoni ikimas. And you can say ashita before my parents or after my parents. Um, now you want to ask about somebody else's parents. Will your parents go there? Goryoshin, soko ni ikimas. And if they're the doer oh, of the action, sorry, yeah. <laughs> they need a marker. Goryoshin wa, soko ni ikimas. And it's a question. Ka. Good. Goryoshin wa, soko ni ikimas ka. Will your parents go there tomorrow? Goryoshin wa. Ashita soko ni ikimasu ka? Go ryoshin wa ashita soko ni ikimasu ka? I will go there with my parents. Ryoshin wa. And it's with my parents. Ryoshin to wa. Now, you only need one marker, and the reason for that is that the wa flags up the doer of the action. I am the doer of the action. So, what we need now is to say, with my parents. So, ryoshin to. Good. Ryoshin to. Soko ni ikimasu. Good. Ryoshin to. Soko ni ikimasu. And, will you go there with your parents? Go ryoshin to. Soko ni ikimasu ka? Go ryoshin to. Soko ni ikimasu ka? And when you reply to a question, such as, are you going there with your parents? Then you can say, yes, I go. How would you say, yes, I go? Hai, ikimasu. Hai, ikimasu. How would you say, where are your parents going? Where are your parents going? When you want to ask a question, such as, where are your parents going? Then say the doer of the action first, and then the question word. So how would you say, where are your parents going? Go ryoshin wa doko ni ikimasu ka? Go ryoshin wa doko ni ikimasu ka? And you'd reply, my parents are going to Japan. Ryoshin wa nihon ni ikimasu. Ryoshin wa nihon ni and if you want to ask the question, why are your parents going to Japan? The doer of the action, and then the question word. Go ryoshin wa doushite nihon ni ikimasu ka? Go ryoshin wa doushite nihon ni ikimasu ka? Now maybe they want to see Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji is Japan's highest mountain. It's a dormant volcano and it's also a sacred mountain. In Japanese, it's called Fujisan. The word san means mount and it's said after the word. So Mount Fuji becomes Fujisan. So perhaps your parents want to see Mount Fuji because they want to see Mount Fuji. Do you just put the wa on a person or would it be Fujisan wa? Right, because they want to see Mount Fuji, mm. they, we're not going to say they, so our doer of the action is understood. Oh, is understood. 
Mount Fuji is, is the a, item they're going to see. Okay, yeah. yeah, so it's back to the it's o. It's been done to, that's right. Fuji-san o. And they want to see. Mi, mi ma tai des. You take off the mass and you add so, tai des. Mi tai des. Yeah, and you're giving it as a reason because... Kara. Do you want to say that again? Because they want to see Mount Fuji. Fuji san o. Mitai desu kara. Fuji san o. Mitai desu kara. We've learnt kare for he and kanajo for she. And we've learnt two other sorts of people tomodachi, friend, ryoshin, my parents, goryoshin, your parents. Two words that we haven't talked about because they've always been understood are I and you. But if we need to clarify who it is doing an action, then we need to use those words. However, we don't need to use them every time as we do in English. So I is watashi, watashi. Can you say I, watashi? Watashi. Watashi. And the word for you is anata. And perhaps a nice word link to make with that is it was nice to have anata with you. Anata. So you. Anata. Anata. So watashi, I, anata, you. If you want to say I go, so you're flagging up the fact that it's I that's going, how would you say I go? Using watashi. Watashi wa. And go. Ikimas. Watashi wa ikimas. And if you want to say, you go, how would you say that? Anata wa ikimas. Anata wa ikimas. And I will go to New York. Watashi wa. New York ni ikimas. Watashi wa New York ni ikimas. And you will buy. Anata wa kaimas. Anata wa kaimas. Will you buy? Anata wa kaimas ka. Anata wa kaimas ka. Will you buy a camera? Anata wa kamera o kaimasu ka? Anata wa kamera o kaimasu ka? And if you want to say the name of the doer of the action, there's some, some popular surnames in Japanese that you might be familiar with. Suzuki, Tanaka, Honda. They're all very common Japanese names like Smith, Jones and so on. Then after the person's name, to be polite in Japanese, you say the word san. You've come across the word san to mean mount, Fujisan. This is a different meaning of san. This is the equivalent of Mr, Mrs, Miss in Japanese. So you say it after the name. So if you were to say Mr Suzuki, Suzuki-san. Mrs Honda, Honda-san. It's also used after first names as well. You always use san when you talk to people that you don't know very well. It's a polite way of um, addressing people. And within the family, your own family, you wouldn't use it. But outside of your own family, then it's very important to show respect to people by using san. So how would you say Mrs. Suzuki? Suzuki-san. And Mr. Tanaka. Tanaka-san. And Miss Honda. Honda-san. And if they're the doer of the action, what marker would you expect to put after their name? So if Mr. Tanaka is doing something, Tanaka-san. Tanaka-san wa. That's right. So, Mr. Tanaka will buy a camera. How would you say that? Tanaka-san wa kamera o kaimasu. Tanaka-san wa kamera o kaimasu. Mrs. Suzuki will do some work. 
Suzuki Sanwa. And we had the image for work was she go to work. Shikotu o shimasu. Suzuki san wa shigoto o shimasu. And Miss Honda doesn't drink beer. Honda san wa biru o nomimasen. Honda san wa biru o nomimasen. So you can't tell if it's Miss, Mrs. or Mr. at all. That's right, you can't. So it's quite, it, it, it doesn't discriminate actually, it's just one word that covers everybody. How would you say, tonight I will watch a movie? Konban, eiga o mimasu. And if you wanted to emphasise or make the point that it's I who will watch a movie, what would you need to add to that? Watashi wa konban, eiga o mimasu. Watashi wa konban. And I will buy a comic book tomorrow. Watashi wa ashita manga o kaimasu. Watashi wa ashita manga o kaimasu. So if we pull this all back together again, the doer of the action is followed by wa and is placed at the beginning of the sentence with the exception of time expressions which can be said before the doer of the action, but equally can be said after. Your verb is coming at the end of the sentence, and then the other item's order can be fairly flexible as long as the marker is said after each item, so it's clear what the item is doing in that sentence. However, if you forget one of these markers now and again, it really isn't the end of the world. The important thing is to be able to communicate and people will really try hard to be able to understand you. So don't stop it saying what you're trying to say. What the markers do principally is help us to understand how nouns work. A noun, as Michelle Thomas would define it, is a word that you could put the or a in front of. We've been talking about nouns as items or people. And a golden rule of Japanese is that you can think of a sentence as a string of nouns and each one followed by a marker and then a verb at the end. So let's practice this idea of a string of nouns in a Japanese sentence with each noun having a marker by gradually building up a sentence. How would you say eat? Tabemasu. Tabemasu. And then to say I eat when you want to make it clear who it is that's eating. Watashi wa tabemasu. Watashi wa tabemasu. And I eat this. So now we're bringing in the item that's been eaten. Watashi wa kore o tabemasu. Watashi wa kore o tabemasu. So the item that's been done to takes the marker o. And if we add another piece of information, we'll put in a time expression. I eat this every day. Mainichi watashi wa kore o tabemasu. Mainichi watashi wa kore o tabemasu. I eat this with him every day. Mainichi watashi wa kare to kore o tabemasu. Mainichi watashi wa kare to kore o tabemasu. We've used the words this place, that place, that place over there, or alternatively here, there, over there. Here is Koko. There. Soko. And over there. Asoko. And the corresponding question word where is Doko. There's another marker we're going to talk about now, the marker no. The marker no is rather like an apostrophe s in English. Or if we were to turn the sentence round, it's rather like of. So if we were to say, for example, the sushi of here, or here's sushi, so the sushi that belongs to here, we can link those two words, koko and sushi, with no. 
The order is the same as the English order where we would use an apostrophe S. So, the here's sushi. Sounds like nonsense in English, but that's the order it would be. Koko no sushi. The sushi of here. The sushi from here, we might say in English as well. But it links the two things together. So, the sushi belongs here, so the no links them together. Koko no sushi. So, if you wanted to say the sushi of here or the sushi from here, which sounds more natural in English, how would you say that? Koko no sushi. Koko no sushi. And if you wanted to say the camera from there. Soko no camera. Soko no camera. Or the camera from over there. Asoko no camera. Asoko no camera. And also, it could be the cameras from over there because there isn't a specific plural in Japanese. They don't have the equivalent of an S that you add on to words to say that there's more than one item. So it could mean either the camera from over there or the cameras from over there, depending on the context. How would you say the coffee of here or the coffee from here? Koko no kohi. Koko no kohi. The sushi from there or the sushi of there. Soko no sushi. Soko no sushi. And we can add a describing word. The describing word delicious. What was that? Oishi. And if we want to say it is delicious, we say Oishi des. Now, if we want to say that the sushi is delicious, we flag up that it's the sushi we're talking about. What marker would we use to flag something up? Wa. So, sushi wa oishi des. Sushi wa oishi des. So, we're saying more about the sushi. If we just want to say it is sushi, we don't need any marker. We would simply say sushi des. If we want to say the sushi is delicious, then we flag up sushi. This is what we're talking about. Sushi wa oishi desu. So how would you say the coffee is delicious? Kohi wa oishi desu. Kohi wa oishi desu. Then if we want to bring in the place where the sushi is from. So the sushi from here is delicious. How would we do that? Koko wa. Now, the sushi from here, we then need to think about the apostrophe S, the here's oh, sushi. So it's koko no. Good. Koko no sushi wa oishi desu. Koko no sushi wa oishi desu. And if we want to say the coffee from here is delicious, we'd say. Koko no kohi wa oishi desu. Koko no We've learnt to say I want to using the ending tai des, want is. And we've taken off the mass and replaced it with tai des. So if you want to say I want to drink, how do you say that? Nomi tai des. Nomi tai des. And we're not saying watashi wa here because we assume that we know it's I want to drink. So we're simply saying nomi tai desu. If we want to say I want to drink the beer from here, how would we say that? Koko no biru o nomi tai desu. Koko no biru o nomi tai desu. How would we say I want to buy a camera from here? Koko no camera o kaitai desu. Koko no camera o kaitai desu. And to read Yomimas, I want to read a comic from there. Soko no manga o yomitai desu. Soko no 
漫画を読みたいです。And if you want to say let's, let's read, we replace mas with a different ending. How do we do that? Masho. Masho. And if you want to suggest shall we, what do we do to masho? Masho ka. So let's read. How would you say that? Yomi masho ka. And if you if you're suggesting it, then you say shall we read? Yomi masho ka. And if you want to say let's read. Yomi masho. Yomi masho. Let's drink. How would you say that? Nomi masho. Nomi masho. Let's drink some coffee. Kohi o nomi masho. Kohi o nomi masho. Oh, shall we drink some coffee? Kohi o nomi masho ka. Kohi o nomi masho ka. And shall we drink some coffee from here? Koko no kohi o nomi masho ka. Koko no kohi o nomi masho ka. So this mark and no, you can think of it as an apostrophe s in English. For example, if you brought in people and things that they own, like Mr. Tanaka's coffee, you would use no between Tanaka-san and Kohi. So how would you say Mr. Tanaka's coffee? Tanaka-san no Kohi. Tanaka-san no. Kohi, Miss Suzuki's phone. How would you say that? Suzuki san no denwa. Suzuki san no denwa. And it doesn't have to be just people. You can link places and items as well. The hotel's phone. How would you say that? Hotel no denwa. And this marker is no, no, no. Hotel no denwa. The word for a report in Japanese, a report that you would write, has come from English. Reporto. Reporto. How would you say Miss Suzuki's report? Suzuki san no reporto. Let's read Miss Suzuki's report. Suzuki san no reporto o yomimashou. Suzuki san no reporto yomimashou. Let's drink the hotel's coffee. How would you say that? Hotel no kohi o nomimashou ka. No, nomimashou. That's it. Nomimashou ka. Shall we? Nomimashou. Let's. Hotel no kohi o nomimashou. And if you do want to ask the question, shall we? Shall we drink the hotel's coffee? How would you say that? Hotel no kohi o nomimashou ka. Hotel no kohi o nomimashou ka. And shall we read Mr. Tanaka's report? Tanaka san no report o yomimashou ka. Tanaka san no report o We've used um, kokono to mean from here, kokono sushi, the sushi from here, or sokono camera, the camera from there. If you use it with places, for example, kokono hotelu, in English that would probably translate best as hotels around here, hotels of here is what it literally means, here's hotels, but hotels around here is A more natural way of thinking of it in English. So, how would you say hotels around here? Koko no hotel. Koko no hotel. And we've also said the hotel's coffee using no. How did we do that? Hotel no kohi. Hotel no kohi. Make sure when you say kohi that it's a long sound for both kohi. Kohi, kohi. You might want to put those two phrases together to say the coffee 
from the hotel around here. How would you do that? The coffee from the hotel around here is literally around here's hotel's coffee, if we want to think about the order. And each of those apostrophe S's is represented by no in Japanese. Koko no hotelu no kohi. Very good. Koko no hotelu no kohi. So the order is the opposite to English. Whereas we say the coffee from the hotel here, the Japanese say it in the exact reverse. The here's hotel's coffee. Everything, in fact, is describing the coffee. The coffee is from the hotel and the hotel is here. The here's hotel's coffee. In English, we say it exactly the other way around. So when you think about that sentence, reverse it in your mind to get the order right. Let's try some more. The sushi from the hotel over there. How would you say that? Asoko no hotelu no sushi. Asoko no hotelu no sushi. And if you want to add something to the end of that, let's drink the coffee from the hotel here. How would you say that? Koko no hotelu no kohi o nomimashou. Koko no hotelu no kohi o nomimashou. And if you want to ask the question, shall we? How would you say, shall we drink the beer from the hotel here? Koko no hotelu no biru o nomimashou ka? Koko no hotelu no biru o nomimashou ka? So you're simply adding ka to the end of the let's to turn it into shall we. You've used kara to give a reason. We, we've talked about it meaning both therefore and because. We also learnt how to say delicious or ishii desu. But if you want to specify the item that is delicious, so if you think the sushi is delicious, then you flag it up with the marker wa, sushi wa or ishii desu. So how would you say the sushi from here is delicious? Soko no. And that would be from there. Oh, from here. Koko no sushi wa oishii desu. Koko no sushi wa oishii desu. And then if you wanted to say, the sushi from here is delicious, so let's eat it. Koko no sushi wa oishii desu kara tabemashou. Koko no sushi wa oishii desu kara tabemashou. So let's recap on the word for where. What is the word for where? Doko. And if you want to say where is it, how do you say that? Doko desu ka? Doko desu ka? Now, if you just simply want to say where is it, doko desu ka is fine. But if you want to mention the place or the person, where is the department store, for example, then you flag up the place or the person that you want to know where it is with a marker. Which marker do we use for flagging information up? Wa. Wa. So if you wanted to say, where is the hotel? Hotelu wa doko desu ka? Hotelu wa doko desu ka? And if you wanted to say, where is the camera? Camera wa doko desu ka? Camera wa doko desu ka? And if you wanted to say, where is this place? Koko wa doko desu ka? Koko wa doko desu ka? So in Japanese, what you're actually saying is, this place, where is it? The camera, where is it? So you flag up the item, the camera, this place, wa doko desu ka? We've been using no to connect places, items and people and we've looked at it as being roughly the equivalent of apostrophe s in English. So we've said things such as the sushi from here, koko no sushi and notice that the order is reversed, here's sushi. And we've said we've connected 
people and items as well, Tanaka-san no reporto, Mr. Tanaka's report, or places and items, Hotaru no Denwa, the hotel's phone. You can also use it to take on the meaning of my, your, his, her, item. And here we begin to use again the words watashi, anata, kare, kanajo. So how would you say my? Watashi no. Watashi no. And then my camera. Watashi no kamera. Watashi no kamera. And how would you say your? Anata no. Anata no. Your comic book. Anato no manga. You is anata. Anata. And your anata no. Anata no. So your comic book would be. Anata no manga. Anata no manga. And how would you say his? Kare no. Kare no. His comic book. Kare no manga. Kare no manga. And hers. Kanojo no. Kanojo no. And her camera. Kanejo no camera. Kanojo. 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 Kanojo no camera. If you want to use this in a sentence, for example, you want to ask a question, where is his comic book? Then, first of all, you say his comic book. We're flagging up his comic book. That's the thing that we want to know where it is. So what marker will we use? Wa. Wa. So his comic book, wa, where is it? How would you say that? Kare wa mang... Oh, no. Kare no manga wa. Doko des. Question. Doko desu ka? Good. Kare no manga wa doko desu ka? And if you want to say, it's here, how would you say it? Koko des. Koko des. If you wanted to be more specific, his comic book is here. How would you say that? Kare no manga wa soko Koko desu. Kare no manga wa koko desu. We've also used no to identify an item with a place. So we've said hotel no denwa, the hotel phone. And we can extend this further. A Japanese TV is a TV from Japan or a TV of Japan. In other words, a Japanese TV. And we use no in exactly the same way to link those two items. So how would you say a Japanese TV? Nihon no terebi. Nihon no terebi. You're actually saying a Japan's TV. But naturally in English we would say a Japanese TV. So how would you say a Japanese camera? Nihon no camera. Nihon no camera. And a Japanese phone. Nihon no denwa. Nihon no denwa. And a London department store. London no departo. London no departo. The mobile phone industry in Japan is a booming business. Everybody has a mobile phone and people use them at home more and more rather than a landline as well. The word for mobile phone is the word for phone, denwa, with the word mobile in front of it. Mobile is keitai, keitai, and maybe you can have the image of a girl called kei who ties accessories on her mobile phone because the mobile phone accessory industry in Japan is also a booming business. So, Kei ties accessories on her mobile. Kei tai. Kei tai. So, a mobile phone. Kei tai demwa. But most Japanese people simply refer to them now as Kei tai. They don't say the denwa at the end. So, Kei tai. 
携帯 How would you say my mobile phone? Watashiwa and it's my rather than I it's my so it belongs to me. Oh, watashi no keiwa kei and she ties accessories on kei tai. Watashi no kei tai. And how would you say it's my mobile phone? Watashi no kei tai desu. Watashi no kei tai desu. How would you say his mobile phone? Kare no kei tai. Kare no kei tai. If you're looking for something and someone tells you where it is, then you can say thank you. And the word for thank you in Japanese is arigato. Arigato. And you might like to think of someone thanking you for a delicious gato you made. Thanks for a really good gato. Arigato. Arigato. And if you want to say thank you very much and be more polite, Japanese is a polite language, then you can add gozaimas to the end of it. And this word gozaimas can make some phrases more polite. It's the mass ending, the polite mass ending for verbs that you've learned, such as tabemas, nomimas, gozaimas. Arigato gozaimas. Arigato gozaimas. So, how would you say, where is my mobile? Keitai wa doko desu ka? Keitai wa doko desu ka? And if you want to make it clear that it's my mobile that you're looking for, how would you say, where is my mobile? Watashi wa. It's my, not I, but my mobile. Watashi no. Keitai. Where is it? You need a marker? Watashi no. Keitai no. No, when you say, where is my mobile phone? The mobile phone is the item you're talking about that you're flagging up. And then you say doko desu ka? I thought it was my mobile phone, the phone mobile phone of me. That's right. So my mobile phone is watashi no keitai. And that whole phrase is then something that you want to flag up. So you need a marker at the end of it. It's a wa. So it's watashi no keitai wa. Where is it? Doko desu ka? Watashi no keitai wa doko desu ka? Your phone is here. Anata no keitai wa koko desu. Anata no keitai wa koko desu. Thanks. How would you say that? A really good gato. Arigato. Arigato. Another way to thank somebody is the phrase taskarimashita. Taskarimashita. You've helped me. Thank you. It sounds as if you've carried out a task for me. Task carry. You've carried out a task for me. Thank you. Task carry plus mashta. Task carry mashta. Task carry mashta. This ending mashta is in fact the past tense. So far, we've been talking in the present and future tense using mas, I do, I will. We've also used the negative masen, I don't, I won't. And now we're going to start using the past, I did. The past tense is also very simple in Japanese. It has one ending, mashita. So whereas in English we have a lot of different endings for the past tense, I see, I saw, I read, I read, I go, I went, in Japanese it is all covered by mashita. It doesn't change for any of the verbs something you're probably beginning to get familiar with, that there is just one way of saying it. So all we're doing is changing mass into mashta. How would you say I eat? Tabemas. So how would you expect to say I ate? Tabemashita. Tabemashita. So we're changing mass into mashta. I drink. Nomimas. I drank. Nomimashita. Nomimashita. And of course, with these simple sentences, we're assuming we know who does the action or who did the action. So 
So we don't need to say watashi wa. So I read. Yomimas. I read. Yomimashita. Yomimashita. I do. Shimas. I did. Shimashita. Shimashita. I go. Ikimas. And I went. Ikimashita. Ikimashita. So we're just keeping to one rule here. All mass verbs in the past tense end in mashita. The word for yesterday in Japanese is kino. Kino. Here's something philosophic to help you to remember this one. The key to tomorrow is to know yesterday. Kino. How would you say yesterday? Kino. Kino. So, I do. Shimas. I did. Shimashita. And yesterday I did. Kino shimashita. Kino shimashita. Yesterday I worked. In other words, in Japanese we'd say yesterday I did work. Kino shigotu o shimashita. And shigoto. When you say a word ending in an o followed by the marker o, you can slide them together. So, kino shigoto o shimashita. Kino shigoto o shimashita. Kino shigoto o shimashita. He read. Kare wa yom, yomimashita. Kare wa yomimashita. Yesterday he read. Kino kare wa yomish, yomisha. So how do you say read? Yomimas. Read. Yomimashita. He read. Kare wa yomimashita. And how would you say yesterday he read? Kino kare wa yomimashita. Kino kare wa yomimashita. Yesterday he read a comic book. How would you say that? Kare wa kino manga o yomimashita. Kare wa kino manga o yomimashita. And notice the time expression either before kare wa or after kare wa. You can choose. I play tennis. Tenisu o shimas. Yeah, and if you wanted to say it in the past, I played tennis. Tenisu o shimashita. Tenisu o shimashita. She played tennis. Kanejoto wa? Kanojo. Kanojo wa? Tenisu o shimashita. Kanojo wa tenisu o shimashita. Kanojo to means with her. So you can say kanojo to tenisu o shimashita, which would mean I played tennis with her. But what you want to say here is she played tennis. She is the doer of the action. So her marker, she, is going to be marked by wa, kanojo wa. So we don't need to because we're not saying with her, we're saying she. She played tennis yesterday. Kino kanojo wa. Kanojo wa. Kanojo wa. Tenisu wo shimashita. Kino kanojo wa tenisu wo shimashita. And if you wanted to add with the word for friend, Tom had an odd achievement. My friend Tom. What was the word for friend? Tomodachi. Tomodachi. So if you wanted to say yesterday she played tennis with her friend. Kino kanojo wa tomodachi to tennis o shimashita. Kino kanojo wa tomodachi to tennis o shimashita. And if you wanted to say yesterday she played golf with her friend, 
How would you say that? Kino Kanojoa Gorufuo So now you want with her friend mm. Tomodachito And the verb to play played Shimashita Kino Kanojoa Gorufuo Tomodachito Shimashita We've used the word ga to mean but and we talked about contrasting two different events. So if something happens every day, but tomorrow you're going to do something different, then you use ga in the middle, and with the second time expression, for example tomorrow, it's followed by a marker which flags up the contrast. Which marker is that that we need to use? Wa. That second time expression followed by wa, the wa is acting like a highlighter pen. It's highlighting the second time expression. So, yesterday I did this, but tomorrow I'm going to do that. So we're underlining or highlighting the tomorrow with wa. So if you wanted to say, yesterday I played golf, how would you say that? Kino watashi wa golfu o shimashita. Kino. Now you want to build in a contrast. Yesterday I played golf, but tomorrow, we're highlighting it, I will work. How would you do that? Sorry, I've forgotten the second sentence. I will work. Now, tomorrow, you want to highlight it. It's something different to what you did. Wa shigoto o and in the second part of that sentence, you don't have to say watashi wa again. You've said it in the first part, so we know that we're talking about I. You don't need to then repeat it. And if it's clear that we know we're talking about I anyway, you don't need to say it at all. Kino watashi wa golfu o shimashita ga. Yesterday I watched TV. Kino terebi mimashita. And your oh. marker? Kino terebi o mimashita. Kino terebi o mimashita. So yesterday I watched TV, but tomorrow I will read. Kino. Terebi o mimashita ga ashita wa. I will read. Yomimas. Kino terebi o mimashita ga ashita wa yomimas. And we don't need to say watashi wa if it's understood that the person doing the action is I. If we bring back in our this and that, this is. Kore. And that. Sore. So, yesterday I ate this, but tomorrow I will eat that. Kino kore o tabemashita ga ashita ashita wa sore o tabemasu. And when you say the ga, the but, it's really attaching itself to the first section of the sentence. So if you want to pause or, or think of a comma in your head, that comma comes after the ga. Kino kore o tabemashita ga ashita wa sore o tabemasu. So the word for yesterday, kino. The word for today is kyo. Kyo. It's actually the same sound as the last part of tokyo although it has a different meaning. So if that helps you to recall that word, then Tokyo, Kyo. Um, you can also think of Tokyo as a city with its toe in today. To, Kyo. So today. Kyo. Kyo. Today I will watch. Kyo. Yomimasu. Mimasu. 
今日見ます。Today I will watch this. 今日これは見ます。Now our marker for the thing that you watch, the, the item that has something done to it, isn't wa, but o. That's it. So today I will watch this. 今日これを見ます。今日これを見ます。Yesterday I watched that, but today I will watch this. 明日それ、uh, Yesterday、oh, I watched that, but today, underlining today, I will watch this. 昨日それを見ましたが、今日はこれを見ます。昨日それを見ましたが、今日はこれを見ます。